This is a 2009 4900 series uh, Western Star, specially built in Washington uh, State. It's got a 505 Detroit DD15 engine in it, 18 speed over transmission, 370 rear ends, 46,000 pound rear ends with 60,000 pound uh, new way air ride suspension, 14,000 pound front axle, and a 20,000 pound tag axle on the back made for towing. As far as I know, it's the only one in North America of its type. Uh, until somebody shows me a picture of another one, I'll, I'll keep saying it's the only one of its type that is a tow truck, not a wrecker, a tow truck, and also a service truck fully equipped. It takes all the fear out of it for my customers when I go to them. Uh, you don't know whether you need a, a tow truck or a service truck. When you hang up the phone, you know one or two things is going to happen. We're either going to fix it or I'm going to tow it someplace and get it fixed. I don't have a, a large education. Uh, I'm self-taught in all my trades. I, I have taken welding courses and stuff like that to upgrade myself. I took an electronic automotive upgrading course as well back in 93, which was about the same time I started this business. The business is about 17 years old. So I started off with a one-ton school bus, then moved to a 56-passenger school bus, then a 1994 Mac, which basically is identical to what you see behind me, except it was a Mac. Uh, my dad was an engineer. Uh, I'm what you call a reverse engineer. I build something and if it doesn't work, I keep modifying the hell out of it till it does work. So, and that's how this truck came about is I took a cheap truck, $26,000 truck with a 24 foot box on it and I modified the hell out of it until I got what I wanted and made sure that it was going to work and then I ordered this one. This truck has never, ever been back to the dealer for anything, anything. DPF related, uh, exhaust system related, nothing. I've never had a mechanical issue with this truck. Volvo makes a very nice interior, very nice riding truck, but try to make it heavy duty for bush application, you won't see a Volvo in the bush. like. You know, you'll see Kenworth, Western Stars, Max. These are these are tough trucks. These are trucks that are built to, you know, take abuse. And uh, when we uh, when we went shopping to buy this truck or a truck, we went around to all the dealers, and uh, I pretty much got myself convinced I was going either to a Mac or to a Western Star. But I said I got to give everybody a chance, so. Me and my wife, we went to uh, the, the Peterbilt dealer and we hopped into one of their Peterbilts and we were almost touching shoulders in the cab. And I looked down between the seat and the gear shift and I, you didn't even have room for your leg to go between the seat and the gear shift, and, you know. I said, I'll take the transmission out of this thing, just trying to get it in the bunk. Like, I said, I'm out of here. I, I'm claustrophobic already, you know. So that shot the Peterbilt down right there like to me it was way too small inside Mac at the time when I wanted to buy didn't make an integral cab uh, bunk and cab so it would have meant I would have had to buy you know the granite truck and then have a bunk made and all the rest of it I, I said well it comes down to a Western Star or a Mac and I I'm not building a bunk and putting it on I, I said I want something that's integral and I looked at uh, all the other options too, like uh, the suspensions and whatnot. And uh, I said, Western Star is the best bang for my buck. And I was interested in the DD15 engine because it had been well proven. And, uh, and obviously I made a good choice because this one has never seen a dealer yet. So yet it's getting old now. So there's a good chance it's going to need some work, but you know, I have more equipment in the back of this truck than most shops. It's got a plasma cutter, MIG welder, you know, 250 amp welder, 10,000 watt generator, hose crimper, up to inch and a quarter hose. I can make tons and tons of hydraulic fittings and stuff to go along with the hoses and everything else. And pretty much any part you'd want for a trailer, a truck, within reason. If I've had to buy it twice, I stock it. 
is sort of my motto. And I carry six alternators, pad mount, gear mount, in every brand. Whatever the guy has on his truck, I put exactly what he has on back on. Now this is my, uh, my diagnostic laptop from uh, Diesel Solutions, uh, based out of Miami, uh, Florida. I've been with him uh, well over 10 years. He's been very helpful in my business. Uh, without this laptop in today's world, it would uh, not be possible uh, to do what I do. It's uh, got every program under the sun in it. It's uh, uh, Mac, Volvo, Detroit, Cat, Cummins, Isuzu, Hino, and uh, Eaton, Fuller Transmissions, and uh, Allison. All the programs, all OEM programs, all updated by him online. Very good system, very good guy to deal with. That's a Zach lift. It's a 44,000 pound uh, wheel lift, uh, fully retracted, 18,000 pounds fully extended out to, I believe it's 176 inches. I've had loads of lumber with sets of B trains behind me and uh, drive it like it isn't even there. This truck handles the weight very well. That very heavy suspension I have underneath that 60,000 pound new air ride is good. And, uh, and the tag at the back, you see pictures of most tow trucks and to me it's ludicrous why they have a lift axle in front of their drives because when you put something heavy on the back I'm not a rocket scientist but think of a teeter-totter okay you, you put a big fat boy on the end of this teeter-totter and put a little guy on this end of the teeter-totter Where's it gonna go? It's gonna go like that. So why would you put a lift axle closer to the little guy? You're just helping the big guy. So put your lift axle at the back where you're putting the weight. And if I put that lift axle down and you're sitting in the cab and you watch that bug deflector on the hood, you can see it go down. So that's how much pressure I can put on that front wheel. And that's where you want it. You want your steering back. I had a guy that was having trouble with his, uh, with his truck down by Latchford. That's 60 kilometers from New Oscar, okay? And, and uh, it was winter time, he was freezing up. And uh, I said, uh, we're gonna take it down the road. I said, I gotta get you off the road. I said, uh, I said, if you start losing power, just let me know. I said, and I said, I'm gonna come in behind you and give you a little help and push. So we get going out of Latchford and sure as hell the first little hill we come to he starts powering out so I get in behind him I start pushing him I just start grabbing gears well I cannot see where I'm going at all all I can see is the outer end of a van trailer so if somebody pulls out in front of him I can't see nothing so we're going down the passing lane you know uh, uh, north of uh, north of there and I let him go again uh, and we come to the end of the passing lane and then it starts an uphill and he started losing power again. So I come in behind him again and I started pushing him again. And I had him up over, over 100 kilometers an hour at one point. And uh, I noticed in the mirror that uh, there was a black vehicle been following us all the way from Latchford. Uh, I didn't realize it until I got to New Liskert that it was actually an OPP. <laughs> <laughs> which he didn't have any problem with what I did you know but he said uh, I was surprised you got that thing moving that fast <laughs> that's one instance where the bumper has uh, come in handy
Well, since the truck is in its own category, that puts you in your own category. So what type of title would you give yourself? Grand Pooba. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, that, I'm sure nobody's going to argue with you on that, especially if their truck's sitting over there broke and need fixing.